Hello, I'm Jack. Uh, and I'm Sam. And we are Sam, Sam and, and Jack, Jack Talks. Talks. Talk. I've got to Cue get my grammar. Music. <laughs> we don't have intro music. One yet. day. Uh, One day. Ambitions, ambitions. It's goals. March 21st. It has been almost one week since the Dutch elections. Uh, Dutch Which I have tweet, been tweeting all about. I Sam, hope you've been following me. At Sam J. It's Morris. riveting. Joseph Morris. At Sam Joseph Morris. Follow him. Um, he's been tweeting an awful lot about the Dutch elections. This week we're going to digest the result and, um, and have, a, have a chat about what that means um, for Europe and the world more generally. Um, so yeah, the, the elections were last week. Yeah. Uh, more than 10 million uh, people in the Netherlands went to the polls. Um, that's a, a record. Yeah, that's a record. It's, it's not a record turnout. Turnout was 82%, but there's a record number of people voting. Record the population growth, so 10.5 million people. Um, they were voting to replace the incumbent coalition government, which had for the first time ever, uh, not ever, first time since 1998, completed its term uh, as as the government of the Netherlands. Um, key issues in the in the run-up to the election were euthanasia, um, a rather bizarre diplomatic dispute between uh, between Turkey and the Netherlands following the expulsion of Turkish um, politicians from from the Netherlands um, and the, the ever-present issue of Turkish not Turkish Dutch cultural identity and, and immigration and, and immigration that's those right. were important yeah. issues um, as well as kind of health care and pension your bog standard boring stuff that we don't similar issues about. that uh, <laughs> are the matter in the UK <laughs> and other countries as well things that people actually care about um, so yeah the the elections happened um, the incumbent coalition leader uh, Mark Rutte's Conservative Party, they came out on top. They now have 33 seats in the new parliament. Yep. Uh, they were followed by Kurt Walder's party, uh, PVV. Yes. Yes. Um, PVV, they got 20. The I'm just really excited because so you appear to call him Kurt Wilson. Kurt which, which the sound makes it sound like a character in the sound of music. But, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I'd say Gert, if you're going to anglicise it. I'm going to say Kurt. Um, Following that, the Christian Democrats and the equivalent of the Liberal Democrats, yeah. uh, so D66, they both got 19 seats each. Correct. Uh, Green Left and the Socialist Party got 14 yeah. seats apiece. Uh, and the Labour Party, who were part of the former coalition, uh, they tumbled down to just, just nine seats. There's a collection of uh, smaller parties that also got seats, including uh, Denk, which focuses on Turkish issues. Well, uh, it appeals to people from a kind of immigrant background in Holland, especially people from a Turkish immigrant background. Same thing. And <laughs> the uh, Animal Welfare Party and the yeah. Old People's Party, yeah. um, which sounds derogatory, but I don't think it is. Um, yeah, and that's that's the. That's yep, the sort that's of good, the gist of, 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 of the elections. What happened? I definitely wasn't looking at notes. There's nothing there. He actually, he actually wasn't. <laughs> right. so it's quite impressive. From he memory. actually learned all of that. I hope you're all impressed. Yeah. I'm now going to turn to Sam and ask you what yeah. your what your initial thoughts were. Um, what are the, the key things you're taking away from the results of the elections? Notes. Well, my, my initial reaction to the election result when I saw the exit polls coming out was, was a sense of kind of satisfaction that I had expected uh, Mark Rutter's Conservatives come out on top, and, and they had, uh, and yeah, they're a kind of traditional kind of party of government in the Netherlands, and, and crucially also Gert, Gert Wilders' uh, uh, nationalist party had been kind of soundly beaten into second place, uh, and, and, and another positive from the election was kind of the rise of the, uh, the Dutch Green Party. Party, um, who, um, uh, full disclosure, who I voted for, uh, who gained 10%, 10%, uh, which is the highest share of the vote uh, ever. 
Uh, as I kind of digested the, the result more, especially after the kind of full results became clear the next morning, um, I had more mixed feelings. Uh, I mean, that was firstly because of uh, the, the fall in, in the share of the vote for the Dutch Labour Party, which is a party I have voted for uh, in the past, and, and it's generally kind of the major centre-left party uh, in, in Dutch politics. So that, that felt uh, from, from around kind of 20% 20, 20 of the vote previously, over 20%. To, uh, to just 6%. Um, so that was obviously very disappointing for, for uh, anyone on the left, I think, including myself. Um, there, was, there was also, um, what also happened in this election is that the top, the top four parties uh, in the poll were all parties of the, of the right or of the centre-right, which is something that hasn't really happened before in, in the Netherlands. So usually kind of parties from the left and right uh, towards the top, mostly the Labour Party. So those two issues are, are, are related. But it, did, it was an election that saw really kind of the Conservatives, uh, led by Mark Rutte, come out on top followed by kind of builders and, and then the uh, Christian Democrats and then the Liberal Democrats who I think you could argue are a kind of centrist or perhaps centre-left party but generally seen as quite centrist in, in those politics. Um, so th those parties coming to top, it's something of a shift. Uh, and for example, after the election, the, kind of the, the three main left-wing parties, kind of Labour, the Greens and um, the Socialists together had, I think, 35 or 36 seats, which is fewer than the Labour Party had on its own before the election. So in that sense, it was a, a disappointing result for the left. Um, and uh, another another reason that the, the result um, gave me more mixed, mixed feelings than my initial quite satisfied um, a reaction was that uh, I, I kind of read a number of uh, a, a number of, kind of journalistic uh, articles afterwards, um, pointing out uh, that really one of them, for example, by uh, Rutger Bregman, who's a, a writer, or Rutger Bregman, I should say, that she's a writer I've just recently uh, found found out about, and he, I think, quite rightly pointed out that um, uh, while kind of the election was seen uh, across Europe and around the world as uh, a kind of uh, um, uh, a, a great kind of loss for, for right-wing populism and a kind of victory for kind of established centrist parties. Um, actually, those parties, including the Dutch Conservative Party and the Christian Democrat Party specifically, had adopted kind of rhetoric and a kind of semi-nativist uh, outlook and, and worldview and, and rhetoric, especially, um, to, uh, as it were, kind of ape what, what Wilders had been, uh, had been saying. And a victory for those parties, obviously doesn't mean a victory for Wilders, but it does mean that uh, a kind of, uh, policies and, and views of that kind are now allowed inside uh, the, the sphere, sphere of influence. Uh, in, in Dutch politics. So that was another reason I had more mixed feelings. Something else he pointed out, which I think is quite right, is that the party that had most successfully, successfully opposed these well, what was on the one hand the Liberal Democrat Party, who are a fairly established party, but especially the kind of Greek Green Left Party, um, uh, Dutch Green Party, which had really kind of fought their campaign uh, in kind of strong opposition to, to uh, Wilders. So that was something else that kind of sprung out of me. So for that reason, I had quite mixed feelings. Well, I want to explore that, that sort of collapse of the left mm -hmm. a little bit more. Obviously, the Green Party surged up in the, in the, in the election. Yep. And that's obviously a, a good thing for them. Cumulatively, though, the, yep. the seat share of the parties of the left has, has dropped yep. quite considerably. Um, why? Um, I think... I think it's relatively straightforward in the case of the Labour Party. The vote just ebbed away from the Dutch Labour Party because it had been the kind of junior partner in a in a coalition government, much like the Liberal Democrats were in the UK between 2010 and, uh, and uh, 2015. And actually, the collapse uh, in the vote of both parties is very similar. What they started with and what they ended up with after the election, they went from around kind of 21, 22 percent both parties to around six or seven percent. Um, and simply being the June, the kind of a slightly a rather left-wing junior partner in a coalition government that is generally carrying out uh, cent centrist, centre-right policies, including uh, quite tough austerity measures, uh, it's going to lose the party votes because people who really believe in, in a more radical left-wing alternative will leave and vote for. Uh, a party like the Green Party, but there will also be people who, who in, a, in a sense, are quite satisfied with the policies of the government, and those people may instead vote for uh, kind of other parties because they see no particular reason to vote for the Labour Party anymore. One other small fact, one other 
factor of some significance was the rise of uh, the party uh, that Jack just mentioned called DENK, or THINK, um, which, uh, uh, as, as I mentioned just now, appealed to people from uh, an immigrant background, maybe kind of second or third generation as well. Um, and those are people who have traditionally voted for the Labour Party. So that party now has, has three seats um, in, in Parliament, and uh, it's, it's, it's kind of widely believed, based on opinion polling, that, that it took all three of those seats from the Dutch Labour Party. So I think that's really the, the reason for the decline of the left in this case was it was down to the decline of the of the Labour Party for those reasons. To what extent did the the Dutch Liberal Democrats D66, who came joint third, what yeah. where did they come from then? Um, they're they're a, w a fairly well established uh, party of government in the Netherlands. They're, right. they're called D66 because they were established in 1966, uh, and they are generally <laughs> the original name and and, and Democrat 66 because apparently they're democratic. So it's a very <laughs> insightful the name. There. <laughs> no, no, I have a lot of respect for the for the Dutch Liberal Democrat Party, and they're generally a kind of centre centre left, um, the centrist party, uh, and they are see they are seen as a kind of uh, a reliable party of government, but also a party that will be essentially be fiscally sensible and not be uh, a big spending party, um, and uh, yet be kind of social, yet be socially liberal on issues such as, uh, uh, well, one that is particularly salient at the moment, kind of euthanasia, but also things like international development aid and education. They have very kind of uh, socially liberal values uh, on those issues. I wanted to turn a little bit and ask about the right yeah. of the spectrum as well. Obviously, the the um, sort of diplomatic row that popped yeah. up between Turkey and the Netherlands seems to have played a little bit yeah. of an issue. It certainly was in the international media. Um, what impact do you think that had? Why do you think voters maybe went to root as conservatives rather yeah. than Valder's? Basis. Um. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the effect of that um, that incident was really relatively straightforward in that it boosted uh, the kind of governing Conservative parties. It boosted Rutte specifically, I think, because he took quite a kind of strong stance. Some might say unnecessarily strong stance to excluding these these Turkish ministers from coming to, to the Netherlands to speak. Uh, it, it is, in a sense, understandable that he did that, um, but these ministers had been to, to France, I believe, and to Denmark, other European countries, and had spoken there. It hadn't been such a controversy. So um, I perhaps understand why, why, why he did that uh, from a kind of governmental perspective, but I think simply that action kind of boosted him because he was seen as having more strongly uh, kind of na nativist r rhetoric, uh, by which I mean, in the, I, what I mean by that in the Dutch context is that he uh, uh, portrayed himself as someone who would defend Dutch values um, uh, against kind of uh, uh, values of other countries, which I think lots of people would quibble, even with the idea of that being something that you could do. Uh, but I think that's what he was seen as doing, and I think he was quite conscious of the fact that he was doing that. What do you... I, I know what you think about this, yeah. because you've tweeted about it an awful lot, yeah. but the international media, um, I don't know to what extent the Dutch media also did this, but a lot of the international media tried to look at this election as a, as a touchstone for um, the populist right in Europe and how they might fail or succeed in the coming years. Um, to what extent was that ever appropriate to sort of look at it that way? And uh, if it was appropriate, what has it told us? Yeah. The, the rise of the populist right in Holland is, uh, is interesting and is worth looking into, but I don't think the Netherlands is particularly, a, a, or this election in the Netherlands was particularly a touchstone for that issue because the the electoral system encourages kind of the, the a division of the, the the electoral system into into lots of smaller parties, of which Wilders is is one, and he was never going to win a kind of a large enough a large enough percentage of the vote to govern, and and really 
even compared to what Marine Le Pen uh, may win in the in the French presidential election, he was he was never even going to win that much. So uh, what happens in in in, in France uh, and to a lesser extent what happens in Germany, I think will be more of an indication of where where Europe is heading. We've had uh, kind of, uh, kind of right wing populism as a presence in in Dutch politics for for 15 years, and it's quite a uh, um, it, it's a known quantity, I think. There are kind of there will be kind of greater repercussions for for the Netherlands, uh, but I think uh, in terms of kind of this election potentially having been a breakthrough for the far right, or not being a breakthrough, and the fact that it's now seen as not being a breakthrough, I think that's prob probably wrong to, to see it that way. I think the way to see it is simply that the the populist right is a continuing presence in the Netherlands and that that remains an issue and it's also an issue how that affects the other parties uh, so for that reason it, it, it's definitely an interesting issue to look into but this election um, uh, uh, wasn't kind of the potential watershed moment I think uh, that it was often portrayed as. And finally yes. um, do you think the lighting that we currently have is okay? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't know. I'm very aware that one of my chicks is very bright. Jack said I'm it doesn't affect pink him, it so might he's be the fine. <laughs> um, I, um, I, think we'll, I think we'll probably be okay. Did you, did you have any opinions on, on this election, Jack, um, just before we um, Only, well, I, I feel like all of the opinions I had are sort of half-formed through, through my discussions with you as somebody who's yeah. far more informed than I am on on uh, Dutch electoral stuff. Um, I think there was, as, as I think we saw in a lot of the international press, a sense of relief yeah. uh, that what had been uh, sort of divinated about, you know, divinated? I mean, divine. foreseen divine. I think. Thing. Expected. Expected. Um, basically, the Wilders didn't win. That's mm -hmm. a good thing. The Green Coke, Jesse Cleaver, um, Justin Trudeau, the Dutch version. Um, Except, but younger and hotter. Let's agree to disagree. Yes, okay. Um, me, me against the rest <laughs> of the world, that one, I'm afraid. I disagree that he's younger. No. Um, I think that his, his sort of rising to the top is a good thing. I think it'll be interesting to see what happens if he enters a coalition government. I um, don't think he will, but um, I think it'll be interesting to see how Dutch politics develops over the next few years following this election. Yes, it will, uh, and that is definitely all we have time for. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, like, like and subscribe. Like and I think subscribe. that's what you're supposed to do. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna point uh, to the tell people about us, tweet about us, whatever you want to do, and uh, we'll have a new video out soon. Goodbye. Ciao.